Hello, Kate. Thank you for being our guest on the Harry's Moon. Thank you very much for coming to see me. I have to say, you're a lot more fit in real life. <gasps> I wasn't expecting that from you. <laughs> Outrageous. But very nice of you to say, thank you. I made an effort for you coming in today. Oh, well, I'm very flattered. <laughs> OK, the first question. <laughs> oh, cheeky. You're best known for, the time, for your time on The Apprentice. What was the hardest test you had to do? Wow. There were so many difficult tasks, but I'd have to say when we went up to the north, to Liverpool and to Manchester, and I'm not sure if you remember what we were trying to sell, cat playhouses, which were basically a piece of cardboard shaped like an aeroplane or a fire engine that your cat was supposed to climb into. As you might expect, we didn't sell any at all. So I knew that I was going to end up in the boardroom. It was really, really tough. Do you all really live in the house together? We do all really live in the house together. It's a little bit like Big Brother when you're not on task because I think there were 16 of us and we're all like sharing the kitchen, having to agree on what to watch on the television and obviously a lot more goes on behind the scenes that you, than you ever get to see on the show. And what about the 5.30 calls in the morning? Were they actually real? <gasps> What about the 5.30 calls in the morning? Sometimes the calls even came at 5am. It was really, really tough because literally it was day after day after day. And sometimes you didn't finish filming until 11 o'clock at night. And then you've got to get back up again at five o'clock in the morning. And people always ask me, do you only get half an hour to get ready? That is true. You only get half an hour to get ready in the morning. I think I'd be half dead and get one leg in one trousers and one half in my trousers. <laughs> I think I might have had my uh, jumper on back to front for one of the tasks, but I don't think you could notice on the camera, so it was fine. But yeah, you, you'd be half asleep in the morning and then it would take a while to get into the task and then it, it got a lot easier as the day went on. I'll have to rewatch the episode, see if I can spot you back Oh no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> do you ever meet up with any of the other contestants, apart from Philip? Well, I still live with Philip, so although I didn't get the job, I did get a boyfriend out of the whole process. And uh, I've made some really good friends as well. So Yasmina, the girl that beat me um, and who ultimately won the competition, she's a really good friend of mine. So I see her probably about once a month. We have a good catch up. She still works for Lord Sugar. And Deborah, who was the tall one with the piercing blue eyes and the black hair, who everyone thought was a little bit scary. She's not, she's a pussycat really. She'd kill me for saying that to you, but um, she's a really good friend of mine as well. You did really well to finish up Runner Up for The Apprentice, and you were described as perfect. Sorry, too perfect. Mm. Can you do a robotic dance for us? Yeah, I was described as too perfect and robotic. I don't think that I'm robotic, but obviously Lord Sugar thought I was. Um, I'm not really that good at robot dances, but if I had to try. Is that any good? More shoulders? Is that kind of robot-like? I need to be standing up, really. I've not been able to show you my full potential there. But as a little sofa robot dance, that wasn't too bad. It'll do. You kind of look like me in my wheelchair. <laughs> No, you look more graceful than me. Oh, <laughs> what do you make of Nick, Lord Sugar's aide? We interviewed him recently and he was hilarious. <laughs> did you know he likes vintage tractors? I did know that Nick liked vintage tractors before, because before you go on The Apprentice, like any job application, you've got to do research. So I did my research on Nick and at the time when I found out he liked tractors, I was like, what's all that about? Because, you know, there he is in his slick business suit, friends with Lord Sugar. He didn't strike me as like somebody that would be interested in something to do with farms, but um, he's got hidden depths. I really like Nick. He's a great guy. He was probably my favourite out of Nick and Margaret when I was on the show. Um, but I just love his facial expressions when he's watching the contestants and they're doing something wrong. It kind of looks like he's sucking a lemon at times. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you now present uh, Studio 5. Who's your favourite guest? Wow. We've had so many great guests 
on live from Studio 5. It would be difficult to choose, but the person that I went out to interview that would be my favourite would have to be Sarah Jessica Parker, because I'm a huge Sex and the City fan, and I was lucky enough for them to send me to New York to interview her and the rest of the cast. Um, and she was really lovely. You know when people say, don't meet your heroes because you might be disappointed? Yeah. I was kind of ready for disappointment, but she was really, really lovely. And she even remembered my name. That's a good interview trick. She went, you see, Kate, when I'm in the UK, and I was like, oh, Sarah Jessica Parker just said my name. It was very cool. Your least favourite? Oh, my least favourite guest. I don't know if I should be telling you this. Go on. The most difficult person to interview was Will Smith's son, Jaden Smith, who played the new Karate Kid. Yeah. He's only 12 and he was jet lagged. He'd literally just got into the UK. So I'm sure he was very, very tired, but he was just giving me like one word answers. So the interview went a little bit like this. There were some serious stunts in the movie. Did you do any of them yourself? Yeah. Wow, you must've done a lot of training for that. Yeah. How long have you been training for? Since I was nine. And you know, and you just think you're not gonna give me anything. And he looked bored and like he didn't want to be there. And that was probably one of my worst interviews. Can you give Harry's Million a mention on Live 5 Studio? I will try my very best to give Harry's Millions a mention on Live from Studio 5. How about having me as a guest? <laughs> I can certainly ask for you. The producer's on holiday today, but when he comes in on Monday, I'll try and get you on there. It'd be quite good if you could do an interview for us. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's someone well fit. You know. Who would you like? Ooh... Who's your type? I think maybe... Cheryl Me Cole? Mm. Not Cheryl Cole? No, I'm a Megan Fox man. Wow, she's kind of hot. I've not interviewed her, but I've seen her on the red carpet at the Transformers premiere, and she was just as gorgeous in real life. We'll see what we can do for you, Harry. Nice one. <laughs> what do you think your life compared to now before you became famous? Wow, I mean, the last... 18 months my life's completely changed from applying for The Apprentice. So I moved to London, got myself a new boyfriend, got myself a job on television that I never ever imagined I'd do. It's not something that I went into The Apprentice expecting to happen and now I get to meet some amazing people, you know, people that I never ever dreamed that I'd get the, the chance to meet. So it's changed in every possible way really. It's been great. I've been one lucky girl. What are my chances of becoming an extra prince? I reckon you could go for it. You're good at thinking on your feet. The interview questions are good. I would quite like to see you go into the boardroom and interview Lord Sugar. I reckon you might be able to catch him out. You've got a lot of qualities that you would need to be the next apprentice. Oh, thanks. Initiative, determination, charm. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> and the big question, what would you do with a million pounds? Big question. What would I do with a million pounds? Hmm. I'd like, to, I'd, I'd like to fix my dad's boiler, first of all, because he hasn't got that sorted, even though I call him on a daily basis. And it's very cold at the minute. It needs heating. So I'd fix my dad's boiler. I would buy my brother a new car. And then I would do some charity work with it. What would you suggest, Harry? Oh. I'd, well, if, I'd suggest maybe giving a little bit to Richard House <laughs> and uh, maybe getting me um, a few fit celeb phone numbers. You know. I can see that you would use the million pounds for power and influence to get the ladies. <laughs> well, that would make me a perfect apprentice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> 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 I think I'd have to treat myself to something nice as well. I don't know, a, new, a, a nice new dress. I need to buy a house, really. That's just, that would be a sensible thing to do. Yeah, I'll probably, bu I'll probably buy a new house. Maybe a sports car. OK, thank you for being our guest. You've been wonderful. Thank you. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. I've had a lot of fun. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs>